Hello data pros, and welcome back to another exciting episode of our Snowflake learning series. In our previous videos, we explored Snowflake's storage and processing layers, covering key concepts along the way. Now, let's shift our focus to the cloud services layer, the mastermind behind everything that happens in Snowflake. The cloud services layer is a collection of services that coordinate activities across Snowflake. These services tie together all the different components of Snowflake in order to process user requests, right from authentication to delivering the results back to the user. Unlike the storage and processing layers, the cloud services layer is securely shared across all Snowflake accounts, except for users on the virtual private Snowflake edition, who receive their own dedicated cloud services layer. Let's dive deeper into the key components of the cloud services layer, starting with authentication and access control. Think of this duo as the bouncers at the gate of a VIP club. When you log in, they first verify your identity using your user ID and password. This check may also incorporate advanced features such as key pair authentication, multi-factor authentication, and more. Once you pass authentication, the next step is verifying your access privileges. While we'll dive deeper into access and security in a separate video, for now, it's important to understand that in Snowflake, Privileges are assigned to roles, and roles are then assigned to users. So, when you try to access data from a table, this layer ensures you're on a role with the required permissions for that table. Moving on, let's delve into the Infrastructure Manager. The Infrastructure Manager plays a crucial role in managing cloud resources on your behalf. For instance, when you start, stop, or scale the size of a virtual warehouse, or when you add data to your tables, the Infrastructure Manager springs into action. It collaborates with your chosen cloud provider to allocate or deallocate the necessary compute and storage resources for your account. Up next, we have Metadata Manager. This component acts as the central registry for all your Snowflake objects. It thoroughly tracks and maintains high-level information about databases, schemas, tables, and other objects. SQL statements such as DDL, DML, and DCL inevitably trigger changes within this metadata manager. For example, creating a table triggers the recording of detailed metadata, including the table name and its column details such as name, data types, and length. While the actual data resides in the storage layer, this descriptive information, known as table metadata, is stored within the metadata service. Furthermore, Snowflake maintains extensive metadata about each micropartition. This includes details such as what table each micropartition belongs to, the minimum and maximum values for each column within the micropartition, the number of distinct values present for each column, and more such statistics necessary for efficient query optimization. The Metadata Manager uses caching in main memory to speed up the retrieval of frequently accessed metadata, hence it's sometimes referred to as Metadata Cache. Let's proceed to Security Manager. Snowflake secures customers' data using multiple layers of security. This approach is popularly known as defense in depth. Network policies provide first layer of defense. You can define a range of IP addresses that can access your Snowflake account. Any attempts made from outside this defined range will be automatically blocked. Next, you must prove your identity and access. This process often works in collaboration with authentication and access control service that we have already covered. Additionally, Snowflake Security Service offers support for a various set of IAM features, including SCIM for centralized user ID management, MFA, which enforces more than one type of authentication, such as SMS received on your smartphone, in addition to password, OAuth for integrating third-party applications, such as Tableau, Federated Authentication for providing support for single sign-on. And as a last layer of security, all your data is encrypted both at rest and in transit. This is done without any additional cost or manual configurations. Even if someone were to intercept the underlying storage, the data would be unusable without the proper encryption key. Furthermore, Snowflake automatically rotates these keys every 30 days to further enhance security. All these features are supported by the Security Manager component within the Cloud Services layer. Next in line is the Transaction Manager. Imagine a large project environment, 
where multiple users often need to concurrently access and even modify data within the same table. This is where the transaction manager becomes essential. Typically, a transaction is a sequence of one or more SQL statements that are treated as a single unit. On the left side, we have five SQL statements without explicit begin transaction and commit statements. In such cases, each statement is treated as an individual transaction and committed immediately after execution. On the right side, we have use begin transaction and commit statements to group all insert statements as a single transaction. If one of the statements within a transaction fails, the entire transaction is rolled back. The read committed is the only isolation level currently supported for Snowflake tables. This ensures that uncommitted rows are never read during select queries. Transactional statements like update, delete, and merge acquire locks on a table, preventing other statements from modifying the same resource until the lock is released. On the other hand, insert, copy, and select statements are typically non-locking and can run concurrently. Transaction Manager running as part of the cloud services layer takes control of all these transactional rules, guaranteeing smooth data access and modifications throughout your Snowflake account. We're now at the final and most important service within the cloud services layer, the Query Optimizer. Have you ever wondered why your Snowflake queries run so fast? It's all thanks to the Query Optimizer working behind the scenes. When a query is submitted to Snowflake, the cloud services layer doesn't just throw it at the processing layer. Instead, it parses and optimizes the query to ensure the most efficient execution. Let's take a closer look at the query processing workflow. When users submit SQL queries from Snowsite, CLI, or any other third-party APIs, Snowflake's query optimizer engine first parses them. Then, the metadata service is consulted to gather information about the tables, columns, and other objects involved in the query. Once the optimizer has this information, it checks if the query can be answered using the metadata cache or the result set cache. If so, the query results are retrieved from these caches and sent to the user. If the query cannot be answered using the caches, then the query optimizer engine creates an optimized query execution plan, which is submitted to the virtual warehouse. The data is then retrieved from the cloud storage layer, and the processing is performed in the virtual warehouse as per the plan. Finally, the query results are sent to the user. This streamlined workflow, powered by the query optimizer, not only boosts performance but also delivers substantial cost savings. That's all for today. Please stay tuned for our next video where we'll explore more advanced Snowflake features. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. We also welcome your questions or thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.